Oh my oh. lord! What? Oh! Reverse three. Hey there! You might be wondering how I ended up in a cage in Las Vegas playing a video game offline in front of an audience and having my picture with the word slain written over my face torn up by this young man here. Well, it's it's a bit of a long story. So I think we might have to take it all the way back to the very beginning. Hi there. If you don't know me, my name is Brian F and I play a little game called Street Fighter V. This game has a long, long history of regional rivalries. Going back all the way to like what, 1892, 1895, maybe 1995, when Street Fighter II first dropped and the two major regions competing in fighting games were the East Coast and the West Coast. It's been going strong for quite some time. And um, as you can see, it has devastating consequences. And I fell victim last weekend to those consequences. Chris CCH, as you guys may have guessed from the last episode of the Brian F YouTube Saga is the man with the mysterious outline and we had some history going back So I'm gonna break that down today exactly why we had that history and how this moment came to be So as I mentioned, it's all about the East versus West Coast rivalry Which has been going on for decades at this point in fighting games But in the modern era, we have something a little bit different WNF versus next level. WNF standing, of course, for Wednesday Night Fights, the West Coast Weekly, where the best in the West would meet up to compete, and next level battle, battle circuit in New York City, where the best in New York would meet every week. Now, in the modern era, the COVID era, these two weeklies transitioned to online and opened up their doors to a much wider range of regions. So WNF would take the West half of the United States, and then east of that line would be NLBC. Now, during this time, things began to change a little bit. For some reason, Next Level Battle Circuit became the de facto weekly. The streams were blowing up. The number of entrants was always increasing. The competition was fierce. And it's not without good reason, because at some NLBCs, you could potentially have three out of four Capcom Cup champions entering. We had Mena, Idom, Knuckledew, plus Punk at some points. All in one online tournament bracket. This was a big deal for me because I competed nearly every single week in NLBC online. That said though, I actually never clinched a victory until 53 plus tries later. It took me over 40 tries to win an NLBC online. This was a big deal to me. It became definitely a point of pride to finally get an NLBC win. But then I ended up moving to the West Coast. And this is where things start to get interesting. I win my very first WNF, first try. And I put out this little tweet, won my very first WNF after moving away from the East Coast. For comparison, it took me 50 plus attempts to win NLBC. Now, you, you gotta be honest, like comparing that success rate, one could maybe draw some conclusions, right? Now, the point of this tweet was because I noticed NLBC had grown to be this platform for players to express themselves, to compete for pride, compete for decent money. There was competition, there were stakes, there was pride. You can gain respect via the NLBC platform. On the other hand, WNF was starting to lose some of its shine, lose some of its luster. A lot of the players on the West Coast during this time, the legacy players, they stopped entering the brackets. You didn't have people like Strider, entering WNF, you didn't have people like Snake Eyes entering WNF. It became a lot more of like the newer generation competing there every week and the streams weren't as popular and it just felt like you weren't getting the props you deserve for doing well at WNF. You weren't getting the respect. I saw this as an opportunity for me to go to the West Coast, stir the pot a little bit, drive up the views, drive up the competition and get some more respect for the West Coast. I was competing every week in NLBC and it was always a big event. I wanted WNF to have the same vibe. So of course, you know, that might have rubbed people the wrong way because I got first versus Chris CCH. He failed to defend the home turf, failed to defend the West Coast. And this wouldn't be the first time. My fellow East Coast brethren, Shine, also came over to WNF and claimed a WNF victory as well. Lo and behold, who was in second once again? Chris CCH once again fell to another East Coast invader, allowing East Coast to take another WNF 
So there, there's a bit of a, a bit of a history here with Chris coming close to defending the West Coast, but falling just just shy of doing so, letting the East Coast invaders claim some victories. Now I haven't won a WNF since I got a couple of thirds with Rog, and then since then I mostly entered with Oro and got washed. So it's not like I've been dominating out there, of course not. But getting the first one like that, kind of making a statement, you know, it's enough to get under somebody's skin a little bit. I think I could see the formation, the formation of someone with a plan for vengeance. On top of that, there's another character in this story. If you don't know anything about the West Coast, the perception of the West Coast these days is that the West Coast is kind of free to one man. And that one man is the demon known as Dark Neff. Dark Neff, AKA Nephew Dork, AKA Nephew. He has been dominating the majority of the major online events that have been going on since COVID started on the West Coast. He won the CPT West in 2020, he won both CPT number one and number two in 2021, and he's won a lot of events over our guy, Chris CCH. In fact, CPT West number two, this event, Chris CCH got second. If you don't know how the Capcom Cup qualifiers work, qualification spot goes to first place. If there's more than one event for the region, and the first place qualifier from the previous tournament wins, he goes to second place. So Chris CCH, he gets into Capcom Cup, good for him, but he does so by getting second. Second to the guy that people say he cannot beat, that the West Coast as a whole cannot beat. And in fact, it's not just, you know, this one tournament, it's not just the CPT series, it's a lot, a lot of the series. EVO Online! If you look at this bracket here, you can see that Nephew happens to win EVO Online from losers, but you can see in the bottom left hand corner there how Chris CCH was the person to take him to two to three games. Chris CCH, I believe, was up 2-0 against Nephew in that bracket before Nephew brought it back. So it's not like Chris ECH is incapable of taking games off Nephew, of course not. It's not like he's out of his league. It's just that in some of the most clutch moments or some of the most bigger events, Nephew tends to be shining a little bit more at this time versus Chris ECH. And in fact, leading up to this moment, once again, Chris ECH gets second to Nephew in the WNF qualifier for the LCQ. WNF ran a tournament online where the winner would win a free fl flight to Red Bull Kumite to compete in their last chance qualifier. Nephew won that, but Nephew was so generous to give his flight to Chris CCH since he was already covered by his sponsor. So leading up to this moment, Chris CCH let the West Coast fall twice. Nephew constantly gatekeeping Chris CCH at every turn. He earns his spot to go to the LCQ by once again getting second to Nephew. He's found success. It cannot be denied, but it's always been kind of in the shadow of somebody else. So leading into the LCQ, Red Bull Kumite, you know for a fact that Chris CCH has something to prove at Red Bull Kumite. It's his time to shine. It's his time to go out there, do work, and see if he can qualify for this event. If you don't know anything about the Red Bull Kumite, there was 15 players who were invited to the main event. The LCQ was supposed to crown one person to join the other 15 to make a full 16-man bracket for the main event. Unfortunately, Mr. Crimson had a dropout last second, so the LCQ became two spots. The top two of the event would get into the finals to compete with the other 14 players for all of the glory. So it was off to the races. I just want to take a little trip down memory lane here and go through Chris CCH's run in the LCQ. First up, we have Defeat Lee. Now Defeat Lee beat Chris CCH in the last offline major he was at. Now Chris CCH didn't take kindly to that defeated. Up next is Joe Ume Rogan, fellow East Coast representative. I've had the pleasure of playing him a few times and he was destroyed. Up next in the bracket, fellow West Coast member and good friend to Chris CCH, Jot. Unfortunately, Jot beat Chris CCH. He won that match. Chris CCH is now in losers. Jot is moving on through winners, but the run doesn't end here. We have Yanub, Yanub, a fellow West Coast member. He was unfortunately bodied. Now, Nephew, Dark Neff comes up next. The rumor with Nephew here, he was rumored to be so favored that they could just hold the tournament in the West Coast. Nephew would attend and clearly grab the last spot. Therefore, he doesn't need an invite. After beating Chris CCH at Evil Online at Capcom Pro Tour CPT qualifiers multiple times. Many, many, many WNFs. You would think he had it in the bag. But Chris CCH had other plans. Louis Man from the DR. We had the DR out there in full force. Kappa, Mena, Mena, and the like cheering from the crowd. Slumped. Jot, the run back. Still all smiles. Unfortunately, this time did not go as planned. He was beat kind of badly. 
He was, he was definitely beat. Then we come to Shine. This is the match, the loser's finals of the bracket, that would determine who qualified into the LCQ. JB is currently waiting Winterside Grand Finals. He's guaranteed to be in the event. That means it's up to Shine to see if once again, he can overcome the West Coast. This is the final East Coast representative in the bracket. All of East Coast's hopes are riding on Shine's shoulders, but Chris CCH remembers when he let the West fall. They had an extremely close set, but eventually he was eliminated. Chris CCH moves on to Grand Finals and seals his spot in the Red Bull Kumite Finals the next day. But he had to face this one man here, JB. Qualifying for the event wasn't enough. In fact, he had to go down 0-2 in Grand Finals before winning six straight games to get first place in the qualifying tournament. Also lost. This man right here goes to the bracket, goes to losers relatively early after all the setbacks in the past two years, after the last offline major where he didn't even make it out of pools. He gets through the bracket, not just qualifying for the event, but doing so in dominant fashion to take first place. But he wasn't done yet. There was something darker brewing beneath the surface, something that nobody could have predicted, something that certainly I didn't see coming. This man was out for vengeance. Some people had some words to say about Chris CCH and his run. Some people were not too pleased about his performance that weekend. Here are some words from Joe Ume Rogan, one of the East Coast brethren. I don't think Chris CCH is that good. Damn, that's, that's what you gotta say? He's like supposed to be the best player on the West Coast. And he's just okay. No, that's not Damn, he said he's okay. He said he's okay at like best. He doesn't count he's like too far above He said line. nephew's <laughs> not the best player on the West uh, Coast. He said he don't count because he's too far no, above everyone. No, 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 no. Chris That's not what I heard. West Coast player, he sucks. Oh, he sucks. <laughs> Damn. Say that shit again. Chris CCH is a real West Coast player because he sucks. Mm, he I'm sucks. not really sure to be honest. I am a Joe Ume Rogan fan. Let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> he said that Nephew isn't a West Coast player because he's so much better than the rest of them, he doesn't even count. Chris CCH is a real West Coast player because he sucks. These are words from Joe Ume Rogan after he loses to Chris CCH in bracket. Shout out to Joe, what a, what a fucking boss. So yeah, like I said, many people weren't happy with uh, the work that Chris was putting in. Now that said, the most important part about Red Bull Kumite, if you don't know, it's not even the gameplay, it's not even the matches. It's the intro the next day. When you lead into the beginning of the event, you go down the hallway, you go in front of the cage, the cameras are all lined up, the crowd's there, and you need to have an intro ready. This is the most important thing to nail. So people were trying to come prepared with their intros, and I think our guy Chris, he came prepared. Chris C C H. He ripping posters. Oh yes. Oh my Eliminated. god. Oh my god. What is Filipino man doing out there? Slay. Oh my god. He's got in the mutants. Oh my lord. He's capturing the disrespect. The disrespect. Chris CCH comes out with the photos of the people he beat along the way, tears their photos up, all paired with quotes from them taking shots and or disrespecting him or the West Coast. There's the Featly Revenge, Shine vs. JB Winter Finals, and LBC Goaded, to be honest. Joe Ume Rogan, I don't think Chris CCH is that good, otherwise known as Chris CCH is a real West Coast player. Nephew, nephew for making thumbnails on YouTube. Apparently that was his sin. And then Shine saying he forbid Bidden nooched up the West Coast when he won his WNF. So I personally saw this. I was the first entrance to the Red Bull Kumite. I was sitting there front and center watching this live and I said, that's sick. What a sick entrance. Little did I know that there was something coming my way. Maybe at this point, I, the gear should have been turning in my head a little bit, but as far as I could tell, I was just enjoying the show. I said, that's a great intro. Came in with a chip on his shoulder and he proved his point and he put the work in. That's what I was thinking here. We move on to selecting the groups. This is what's gonna decide our fate for the rest of the bracket. I was in pool C with Mono Problem X and Goichi. Chris CCH was in a pool with Oil King, Angry Bird, and Punk. The first match I wanna point out, and the most important one is Chris versus Punk. Punk is playing Colleen. Punk did not play Colleen or anyone other than Karen for the rest of the tournament, but only against Chris CCH should he pull out the Colleen. Now, I cannot put words in Punk's mouth, I cannot say for sure, but there are people who would say that he picked this character specifically to avenge his fallen brethren, Nephew. 
nephew, obviously the most prolific co-lead main we got, not only West Coast, but in the United States. You know, there might've been him trying to defend his, his, his friend, his former roommate, Punk might have been going for the revenge pick. Now, it's not like Punk doesn't play an amazing Colleen. He's been one of the strongest Colleens for a long time. He's used Colleen in many tournaments and done extremely well with her. Maybe the match is what he wanted to play. Who knows? Who knows? I can't say for sure. However, I can say that it didn't work. Chris CCH actually takes the set 2-0 over Punk. That's a big win for Chris, but it's also a big win for fate. Because he won 2-0 over Punk, if we look at the group standings here, that put Chris CCH as the number one standing in the group. This means that I go into the top eight phase, the finals phase of the tournament, and I have to play Chris CCH. If Punk had beaten Chris CCH, Punk would have been first seed and I would have played Punk out of group stages. But because the moon, the stars, and everything aligned, Chris CCH is first in pool D, I'm second in pool C. We have to play round one of the finals. And you know what? Things are going pretty good, actually. Typically, I'm not comfortable in the Sakura matchup. I'm not comfortable at all, but here I am. For some reason, I'm about to go up 2-0 versus Chris CCH, potentially putting myself into the semifinals phase of Red Bull Kumite. What? Is this real life? Is this actually happening? This isn't a bad spot for Brian, because Brian okay. has V-Trigger and... I... Oh, the spaghetti. V-Trigger time. Several missed oh. inputs in a row. Z, who got it, bro? Who got it? Oh, my lord. Oh, closing That's out that run. Track. Go ahead and smile, Brian. You deserve it, but it ain't over yet. Job ain't finished. Job ain't finished indeed. I'm up 2-0 against Chris CCH, and I'm nervous laughing. This isn't a uh, sigh of relief. This is like, what the hell just happened? How did I win that? That was pure spaghetti laugh. But somehow, I'm in a position to potentially take this set 3-0 over Chris CCH. However, things kind of don't end up working out that way. First, Chris wins one game, and I think, okay, nothing to be nervous about yet. It's 2-1. It can't possibly be 2-2. Then I get a round, but Chris gets the second game, and I'm thinking, whoa, that was quick. My lead has been blown already. Final game, it goes to the final round again. I'm on match point, but this time Chris CCH is on match point as well, and then we all know how it goes down. Good for him as he gets that sweet punish. Very nice though, with that sandy light kick buffer. Again. Another one, bro. Uh oh, uh oh. To walk forward and bait that uh -oh. out. And here comes the throw vacuum. Tries to go for the shimmy. Keeps all this pressure on with the EX. Blows all of his bar. And the onslaught finishes. Oh my oh. lord. Oh. Reverse three. He makes the unfathomable 3-0 come back and i had to say you know what good job to chris I, I was ahead a lot i didn't really know why i was ahead he adapted and i did not counter adapt and i thought man it happened to me had to happen to somebody right so i'm getting up here i'm getting ready to shake his hand i'm preparing for the pop-off but i could not have seen what came next He pulls out a picture of me and he tears it in half. And finally, it clicked in my head. Oh, I'm one of the targets. When he was show doing the intro with everybody else from the East Coast, I was one of them. I was one of the targets that he was out for vengeance against. I had no idea. But then it all made sense. I said, oh, it's because I won a WNF, isn't it? There it is, the slain photo with my tweet. Won my very first WNF after moving away from the East Coast. Came full circle, me trying to stir the pot for the West Coast to get a little hype going, to get people to tune in for WNF. It finally came full circle. The first online tournament meeting with Chris CCH, I had to take the victory, and the, the first offline meeting Chris took it from me in the reverse 3-0 comeback. All said and done, I respected the pop-off. I liked the energy. I was super hyped for his run the whole way. So to have it blow up in my own face when I was rooting for Chris the whole time, it was pretty funny to me because I just didn't piece it together until it was too late. I didn't know what was brewing beneath the surface. If you know anything about the format for Red Bull Kumite, I have to stand there and wait because they have to perform an interview with you and the ceremony where you hang up the gloves. I think I handled the interview decently though. Brian, I know that this is probably really hard to do after a loss. I'm very sorry. <laughs> very, very sorry. But uh, how do you feel? Not great, not great. <laughs> But 
but if I had alluded to someone in that fashion, I'm glad it's Chris ECH. You know, he came with the energy this weekend, and I, I respect it. You know, he came with a plan. He executed. Yeah, that's how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> I was slain, so sad I couldn't move on, but happy Chris got to win in that fashion. That's how you get it done. I killed that fucking interview. You know what I'm saying? I got blown up. I literally got ripped to pieces. I had to think on my toes real quick, how do I salvage this? <laughs> I didn't know this was coming, all right? So I had to figure out how to pick my literal pieces of my face off the floor and literally save face in that moment. So I had to give him the props. I mean, like I said, I love the, the intro when he did it to everybody else. So I guess if I had to be on the receiving end of it, I'd have to handle it as well. Um, so that's pretty much it. Chris, you know, he had a lot to prove. Like I said, I think I tried to establish why he did. He felt that the West Coast wasn't getting the props that they deserve for quite some time. You know, I can kind of see his argument there about that. The West Coast has been undervalued in recent years because WNF hasn't really been putting people on the spot as much as I would hope. If I got to be the bad guy to get people excited about West Coast Street Fighter V, then I'll be the bad guy. Hats off to Chris once again for the amazing comeback. Unfortunately, he fell after that match to NL, his fellow UYU teammate, and NL went on to get second place. If I had to go out in the event, I guess I'd rather go out slain than, than silently put, put to sleep. So glad to go down swinging and have one of the, uh, be on the receiving end of one of the best pop-offs in quite some time in Street Fighter V history. So happy to be part of the moment one way or the other, but I would have preferred winning. Let's be honest, I would have preferred winning. It's true, can't be that humble, would have preferred winning for sure. And that's the story of how I was slain in Las Vegas at Red Bull Kumite. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and be back for the next one and I'll catch you guys then. Peace.